Hi folks, welcome. It's um, your init 6 team here again. Um, slightly cut down um, from, from the, the last time we saw you. There's a few, few less faces around the table, but nonetheless, we're all here ready and raring to go. We've been talking a lot about who our who our inspiration is, our inspirations are, our heroes, our, whatever you want to call it. People who who really um, lead the industry, who lead what we do. There's us, of course, right? But there are other people who who um, you know give us inspiration. And I think, um, well, we all thought it'd be a good idea to to have that chat, really, and and try and generate a bit of conversation out into the community as well about who these people are. There is a, a, a reason why we wanted to do that, but we'll come to that at the end. Um, who wants to start? What, what, what do you want to say? Abdel. You look okay. like oh, yes. to, to drop something <laughs> Let's there. Me, uh, uh, hey. yeah. Let me start with proposing, uh, um, interviewing the one of the fathers of the internet uh, I, uh, and um, uh, the Dr. Vinton Cerf, Vint Cerf, he is the uh, co-designer of the TCP IP protocol. He is the, um, um, has many, many awards. He's the founding member of the internet and the, and the career we all adopted right now. So um, I think maybe, uh, it's a, it's a very good start. We could uh, actually um, um, bring Vint to talk about um, um, about the current um, landscape right now, post COVID nineteen, uh, at, at the time of this recording, I believe, and uh, also uh, the future of the internet, and maybe so you give some advice for the you know, um, members of network engineers and and future network engineers as well. You know, you know what, that's, that's a great, that, that's a very great uh, uh, nomination, right? So you can't really say Vint Cerf's name without saying Bob Kahn, right? So, of course. But, but just like anybody else, and if I was to say, you know, Allah, this was like our Mount Rushmore, what have you, um, most of the people that we're gonna name, you know, has have other people that contributed to what they're going to do, like for example, we just talked about Vince Surf and Bob Kahn, who, you know, uh, invented TCP/IP. You know, um, and the reason why I, I think that's important is without interconnectivity, right? There is no, there's no internet, and 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 right now, that's what runs the world. But See now. go on, go. On. A lot of people, you know, when you say Vince Surf and Bob Kahn, and I don't want to say Batman and Robin because then people are going to say which one's Batman and which one's Robin, but it brings you back to um, other people in this era, like Bill Gates, Paul Allen, you know, um, or, or, and, and I don't really nominate those guys on Mount, Mount Rushmore, you know, um, uh, because without those guys, we wouldn't have uh, Steve Jobs and, and, and Wozniak, right? And Wozniak, right? And, and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is the this is the point here, right? So, so what you got to think of is is there's a history to what we do. There's the now, and there's the future, and and I think that the the point with I mean, I know we talked about this before, right? I'm a student of the history just because I think it puts you in the right place um, in your head to understand fundamentals, understand why we do what we do. But then it also gives us ideas, well, a couple of ways really of, of where the future is going. One, because there's a trajectory, you start in one place and you and you go. But the other is that people had ideas and that sometimes those ideas weren't able to be implemented because the technologies weren't available. And so, and so you, you've got to wait for those technologies to become available before you can use those ideas. So, so for your, for your Vince Cerf and your Bob Kahn, for your um, Paul, Alan, Bill Gates, was and, and, and Jobs, I'll give you the guys from Xerox um, Palo Alto, right? In, in 1973, about the same time these guys were operating, Bob Met Metcalf and Dave Goggs were inventing Ethernet, right? They were, they were, they were people building the first, um, people like um, 
Alan Kay and, and his team building the first version of a personal computer. The, 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 the idea of personal computing didn't exist before that stage because it was time sharing, right? So, so I think yeah. you've got so many, so many people to go at there. And all of those guys are based, basing their work on ideas that have come from, you can go back as far as you like. Beneva Bush, right, at the end of the Second World War was talking about about the personal computer or the ideas of having a Memex, which was a, a device that stored all of your memories and all of your your personal information um, that you were able to carry around with you. You know, so the point is that all of it all has to start somewhere, and it's all got to go somewhere. Yeah, and I think I, I think you're right though. People like you know these guys who who have come and brought this to, to, to now. Is amazing, but but who who's there now? Who's what the, what is, now? But the thing that's lost in everything you just said, right? Because I love Vint Surf, interconnectivity, TCP/IP, you know, right? Ethernet, right? Xerox brought us Ethernet, right? Um, Bill Gates, uh, Jobs, whatever they brought us the PC. But I promise you, the idea man is lost in, in this whole thing, right? It's, it's sometimes it's not about the technical invention; it's about, and I'll give you a scenario. Um, and you guys are going to probably laugh at me, but then I want you guys to think about it, right? There was only one company that had this prime vision on getting everybody and their grandmothers on the internet in the first place. And I don't know if you guys remember that time in the 90s where there was Prodigy and AOL. AOL marketing was killer, right? And I and then I probably say <laughs> Steve Casey. You're going to get a copy this week from them the discs right the cds oh, yeah. on the front of no magazines one, every single magazine but no one knew what a browser was no one knew anything not, not even what the internet was they just knew that they put their cd in they click a button and they heard bar, 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 and next thing you know they're they, they had access to everything they wanted to access and i said no but, but but the point is that that they wouldn't have had anything to do unless sir tim berners lee Hadn't, hadn't followed up on his research project through the late 80s into the 90s and yeah. developed the World Wide Web in the first place. I mean, granted, we'd have got there eventually anyway, probably, but the point was that that project and and the follow-up. So, so um, uh, was it um, Andreasen at, at NCSA, um, Creative Mosaic, the first graphic web browser? That's the one because that then presented all of a sudden a screen where you've got effectively a magazine looking exactly. from the end to all of that data that, that sat behind it. And I think- uh, funny, 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 funny enough, it's not the first GUI, but it's the most popular one. So that's, that's actually what promoted the World Wide Web uh, after the, um, like the creation of the World Wide Web, because it was there, but there was no adoption of the internet back in the 90s and once more uh, mosaic started to to once it's created and started to get um adopted it's started to get adopted because of the uh the the the, the you know the gui um uh, look of it the enablement of pictures and maybe eventually later videos but now it is that's why it's get it's getting more popular people are started to see the value of that network which is called the internet and, and that's the thing isn't it so uh, go on rick oh, no, I, was, I was gonna say i think Gary, you asked about you know somebody kind of kind of newer doer or you know with in this time right and one of the things i think is interesting is that a lot of our trends and stuff at least that i've seen in technology have come full circle right because uh, with like, virtualization in the data center it's really gone back to dumb terminals and kind of you know mainframe it's type time sharing isn't it it is time sharing, it's virtualization. So, I mean, two, you know, kind of more kind of, you know, this, this kind of new era of technology that, that come to mind that I put up there is, is one is, you know, being more focused on, you know, automation and, and, and coding and stuff and that, uh, making that transition is, you know, uh, Michael DeHaan who created Ansible, right? There's. That's a great one can't say Ansible or you can't say really Python or any of that automation without, you know, and somebody mentioning Ansible, right? Um, and it's real tough to kind of learn code and get deep into kind of 
syntax and that and ants what what ansible did was make that a much easier kind of thing that you do you either easier form of automation versus uh you know using a common you know kind of language and stuff mm -hmm. um and so that's that's kind of number one that I, I put up there uh number two is in it was in the data center right there's there's been a couple of different at least in in my career uh some big paradigm shifts and uh, one of this is because he's actually went to college here in Houston uh, at Rice University is uh, Mohit Aaron. I don't know if I know that is, but he started, he was one of the lead developers on the Google file system. And so started at Google and then he, he left Google to start the hyperconverged kind of movement with Nutanix, right? And, and build up that kind of way of looking at the um, uh, server infrastructure and managing your data center assets similar to what was, you know, what people loved about cloud is it was easy, right, from that. So that, and then after Nutanix got built up, well, now changing, the, a lot of our storage is, the bulk of it is not like mission critical, mission critical data. It's a lot of like, you know, things like pictures and, you know, music files and stuff. If you look at your drives, a lot of it is, those kind of that secondary data right yeah. um and so now he, for, after leaving nutanix now he started cohesity which has kind of revolutionized the whole secondary storage market for uh how that's handled and kind of taking that hyper converged story into uh storage yeah, that's really interesting that's actually so pretty... that's great yeah. yeah so kind of a serial serial uh uh innovator right we got to get michael Dehan on on this on on, on our chat on on our uh, webcast but you mentioned Google and and let me tell you, if I ever invented something, I would love it to be a verb, right? So Google, I mean, you can, <laughs> when you invent something and it's a verb and 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 not only that, it, 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 it you think Google runs the world, um, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, right? So um, Google, that's another, I mean, those guys changed the world. And that's essentially what we, you know, technology, or at least our influences are are, are are actually responsible for changing the way we do things, right? And Google, when Google came out, we had search engines before, but Google just changed the world. In fact, I don't even know if anyone knows how to do anything anymore. They just Google it, you know, so. <laughs> but well, I mean, you, your, your, your verb analogy is, is perfect. Cause I mean, you look at the ones that, I mean, you know, MSN search or you know, Yahoo, Yahoo never reached that verb status, even though it was out there before Google, right? They had the chance, but they blew it. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. So I'll take I'll take uh, you Google, and I'll and I'll take it back to the history again because of course. Um, take um, it back there. No, no, no. Well, our man, our man Vince Cerf, right, is is now what is he? Chief Internet Evangelist. There you go. At Google, right? Those guys hired someone from from you know their, their foundation to to lead them forward because because of obviously the vision and and whatever that that he brought to uh, to it in the first place so i think you know that that's a good we talked about rfc 1925 um, a couple of episodes back i'm sure you remember well um rule 11 um always refers to the fact that there's nothing new in in networking that everything's been invented once before and it's and it's just a constant cycle perfect example right what, well that's let's take because because you look at TCP IP, TCP IP was invented because it was an abstraction layer, right, between applications and between and the networks that they ran over. That was the point. It was able to abstract one from the other and and provide delivery mechanism across the two. What else is 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 um, underlay and overlay networking and, and SDN and all of those things? What else are they other than the same principles? So again, you see another case there for for for. Our, uh, our co-founders and co the co-creators of TCPIP. I love the fact that everyone looks at this from a different perspective. Go ahead, Abdel. Taking from that thread as well, I think it's it's uh, fair as to um, to 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 see what's the um, who started the clean slate project and in reintroduced recycled the virtualization concept for network, and that's maybe I suggest Martin Casado. Uh, would be an ideal candidate in that case because we would try. He uh, um, he he he, um, he initiated with Nick McEwen um, as his supervisor uh, uh, the first uh, um, or popularized the 
software defined networking paradigm and introduced uh, the concept of the decoupling of the control plan and the data plan. Actually, you reintroduced it, it was there before. Uh, there was network virtualization and network or software defined controllers were there before even the Martin Casado thesis about uh, net, uh, virtualizing the network similar to virtualizing the compute and storage resources. And that started by um, and presented the different vendors. I think no, uh, there was very, nobody actually believed that would be a thing, including one of the biggest vendors right now, networking. Uh, and I remember I attended one of the, uh, Nick McEwen, who is uh, the partner of, uh, of, uh, of Martin Casado in a lecture here in the Royal Society of Science in London. And he mentioned that he's, he, he gave, um, a pitch about, um, creating, um, uh, uh, a network virtualization layer, uh, within in software decoupling control and data plane in, in the essence, uh, creating what, what, what we call software defined networking in the essence of, um, uh, mainframe terminal mindset, people didn't believe that from different vendors. And then he stopped the company, Niceria, and we created, yeah, Niceria, and he, he created the first, um, uh, control, or like the first commercial, commercialized software defined network controllers with the network virtualization on, uh, um, layer and been acquired by VMware, uh, uh, later with 1.2 billion dollars, I think. Uh, and, um, the idea is they started to, um, to popularize, po popularize an idea of decoupling the network and the, the, the control and the data plan it started the network programmability paradigms, uh, paradigm right now and the right, and then I think it's, is a good candidate for our, maybe we can, um, bring him to the show and. Talk to him about that as well. Well, here's here's the one thing I like to comment on before we, you know, the, while we're while we're going down this track, right? Um, we start talking about influential people, and to be influential, you have to change the way people work. I mean, it's 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 when you have a product or a solution or an offering or an invention, and you put out there, and and it just does it a, a, a thing. You know, that's great. I don't think that's influential. When you have a product or solution out there that that changes how people work, how people see things and so forth, um, I think that's influential. And I don't want to miss Jeff Be uh, Bezos out of this, right? So Amazon. Amazon, without Amazon, there wouldn't be Uber. There wouldn't be Uber Eats, which most of you guys are using right now, right? Um, it, it's the ability to, to, to invent a platform, right? And that's what Amazon is. It's an is a platform that really survives by making sure that you have X that can make it to Y, right? The consumer, right? Anything you want, we can make it happen. And it governs that. And 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 technology right now today is based on a bunch of different platforms. We have AWS, which is still the same concept, right? Azure, uh, GCP, which you know, Google, and so forth. Our whole way of life is run by these platform services that pretty much is technology is just, you know, able to provide more goods to the consumer at a very fast and, and, you know, enhanced way, you know what I mean? So these platforms, so Jeff Bezos gets a kudos, you know, and, and I go back and I can probably tell you, and you guys too, in the nineties, I thought this book thing wouldn't last for long. Right. You know, it, it, it's, it's, you had these, you know, bookstores, they were out, you know, why should I mail order or whatever, um, in Amazon and look at today, today, I solely wish I had bought stock in Amazon back in the night. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, so, I don't know about, about stock, but I think most, most of these books came from, <laughs> from Amazon probably right? back in the nineties, actually, but that's another story. Sorry, Rick. No, I was just going to say along those lines of transformation, I was reading an article earlier and, and I remember. Because, you know, when I started my, my, my certification journey with, with Cisco and stuff was, you know, I went to my first, you know, kind of networkers back in like 2006 in, in Vegas and stuff. And it was right when, you know, voice over IP was kind of, you know, that was the big buzz. And that's what I was doing and cutting my teeth on and stuff. And I, I remember specifically how, um, you know, John Chambers, who was in charge of Cisco at the time, right? He, 
was like, you know, video, 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 right? And, you know, I remember the words video is going to be the next killer app. And it never kind of, even with the, you know, the acquisition of Tamburg and some of that stuff, right? It never even kind of caught on. Now in today's context, and that's what this article uh, was about today, is like, look, video is finally relevant really for, for business applications. And, you know, just like we're recording this video right here, all from our, you know, homes under kind of quarantine, right? Without video, this is, it, you know, it, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't even be possible really. It'd be a completely different, you can record something, but it'd be a completely different feeling and user experience, right? Um, well, that's the point, isn't it? It's, it's brought us together. I mean, look, let's face it. I think we've, we've, met, we've all met once probably, and, uh, you know, all been in the same, the same place at the same time, just on, on one occasion, um, you know, t two years or whatever it is on from that time, we, you know, we, we do this, we couldn't do this without, without that, that sort of a platform. You're right. You know, and that's the technology. Oh, Jack I want to offer this to our, our users, right? To our, to, to our watchers, our viewers, our subscribers to, to, to actually contribute because I'm pretty sure we left a lot of names off the list, right? So we would love to keep this discussion going, but Rick just kind of brought up a new topic, which, you know, after this current state is, is over, what changed? I mean, the technology, you're right. There, there was a point in time before this, this outbreak that video was an option. I didn't want to see you, you know what I mean? It was a audio <laughs> bridge with an option to see you, you know what I mean? And now you know, I'm looking in every meeting, people need this interaction more than ever, and they, they opt to go video first, right? Maybe video with an option of audio, I don't know. But, uh, but you know, so how does uh, epidemic, what do you think will carry on? Well, how, do, how does this epidemic change the way technology is viewed and how people use technology? You guys well, it to... also accelerated, right? I mean, there's a lot of uh, us as individuals started, re you know, resisted the video aspect for a while, right? But, you know, organizations fundamentally are, are going to change kind of coming out of this and that, you know, like education, right? I mean, I think higher ed and stuff is going to be completely different now that we know that we can do this remote learning and remote, you know, be productive, right? How is it different from, from you know, yesterday? And we're talking, you're saying higher ed, so I guess we're talking university, right? How is that different than yesterday? Well, I, mean, I, think, I think there was it, for students on, you know, uh, on site, right? And, and, and congregating these big campuses and stuff, right? Now, I, I think there's going to be a lot more of this where, I mean, I, I, I think, I mean, I see my kids, right? My elementary school kids are using, um, you know, Zoom meetings and stuff now and Google Classrooms and submitting stuff. I can see even in the K through 12 space where just like you have teacher in service days and the kids don't go to school, but the teachers work, I think you're going to have distance learning or remote learning days, even down at the elementary school level, because, um, you know, I'm thankful that my, my son is, you know, learning Zoom and doing some of the stuff that daddy does every day, right, and using the technology because it's, I mean, that's how I make a living if you can provide for my family, right? See, I think see, education, it, it, education really hasn't changed in maybe a hundred years. And you say, and, and you say how, I mean, it's, it's, we use technology, we introduce technology into schools, but schools have full adoption is being able to leverage that technology to enhance the learning of our students, which we haven't done yet until now. Right. And I think that the most viable thing based on what, because universities have been doing this for a while. Uh, I, I got my degree learning online, right? So universities have been doing this for a while. What we need to happen is that trickle down effect of being able to um, take lessons learned and also uh, uh, curriculum building based on being able to leverage technology to reach our, our kids. And I think that's what we're missing. And I think schools will get there. If this epidemic lasts, um, you know, a, a lot longer than now, I think that the next evolution will be to leverage how to 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 enhance learning our kids uh, using technology, you know, using Zoom, using WebEx, using... Uh, I mean, the other thing, so, I mean, you know, education, right? And the other one that's really gonna change dramatically out of this is, is healthcare. Not in the sense of what it's able to do now, but just the amount of scaling. I think telemedicine, right? And that looking at interfacing with the doctor patient via, you know, video and stuff like this, 
yeah, those options were out there, but, and I get it, you know, uh, it was cheaper than a normal going to the doctor under like my insurance plan. I never did it. Right. But now I'm not going to a doctor's office. I can tell you that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? okay. I'm going to talk to my doctor like we're talking now. So, so this is the point, right? So, so I think what, what it's taught us is that all this stuff's possible. I think there are some cases where it's not rel not not necessarily preferable. I, th I agree with you from a doctor, you know, the doctor to patient relationship and that sort of thing. Why why risk it? Or, it's not even that, is it? Why <laughs> put yourself out to go to go to go visit a doctor's office if you can just do it this way? I think I think there is an important part. I think I think schools and 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 universities to some extent. I think there is a still a need and a requirement for the social aspect of actually being in someone's presence and, and doing that. So I think that's, that will still be there, but I think there are options. And I think that's the point. The point is that what the technology does, what's happened is the technology has proved itself that we're able to use it and we're able to deliver something that's meaningful. I think people, people, people have been scared of, of actually, well, not scared, but, but, but um, resistant to actually making sure that they can try and use the technology. So one of the things to consider for, you know, for the next time that I'd like to, you know, ask viewers to kind of think about and chime in on is we, we, we rapidly scaled up the technology really quick in response to this, which has been great. And we've continued to live and survive and work. Now that we've been able to do that in the technology, I think that kind of sets the bar up here of what can we do, right? And so the next time I'm, I'm interested to see like how that, Kind of accelerates it because we as a technology society right have you know just like the automobile right it changed the way you transfer transported yeah no 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 well, 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 let me, for let me scale, take right? a step back right. let's take a step back for a little bit right because the technology was always there and what we talked about before right. well, listen, there was change scale. adoption yeah, scale human was behavior there. right Human behavior. I can tell you that if my copay is thirty dollars, regardless if I go into the doctors or not, I'm going into the doctors, right? Different scale. Now we have virus, right? I'm not going to the doctors. I can I, I, I'll, I'll do my telemedicine from home, right? It's human behavior, and once I get used to that, I think that that's when you start seeing shift because I I I've seen telemedicine. The technology has been there for years, right? And now it's starting to take off. And getting back to another point that Darren made, you have other things that that are in schools and hospitals that that we didn't think about. There's physical therapy, there's occupational therapy. There, there's special needs, right? So these all need an element of uh, physical presence, physical yeah. presence, right? But now I think the ratio has changed a little bit because using telemedicine, I'm able to help you work with your own child, right? And then. Maybe a couple of times a week, I'll get, you know, physically able to do it. So it changed. I think this is only going to advance technology more because people now want to hear the rest of it, right? So, yeah. yeah but now, yes, just, not, not now uh, we are forced to do everything remote because of the virus thing. But once that's uh, done, uh, we won't uh, stop meeting in person forever and we won't stop uh, going uh, to offices. So the social aspect is also very important. Yeah, Sometimes there is something you have to discuss with someone where it's just a good idea to invite him for a cup of coffee. And that's something which you can't do uh, in a WebEx as well. And so I think we will find a new way to work and we have to lock in on another model, which will be different from the one we had before the virus, but which will also be different from what we have today. So I believe there will be more in-person meetings and physical interaction once we are we are done with the virus, but not in the same way it was before. I think, I think for, for me, it's like we've seen what impact something like an event like the virus can have. OK, and so and so you think of all the business continuity planning and all that stuff that happens, the DR stuff. Um, what I'm about to say adapt, is controversial. We adapt. Yeah, but we adapt the way we work so that there's less of an upheaval next time something like this happens. I think that, do you know what I mean? That's where the evolution is. It's in, it's in adapting our behavior, um, which is a uniquely human thing, right? One thing I'm gonna say is gonna be controversial, and this is based on what Wolfram just said. You have to realize that tomorrow's not the same as yesterday. And granted, yesterday, I wouldn't mind going to a Starbucks 
or a, uh, a coffee shop or a donut shop or wherever you want to do. All right. But you keep in mind one car for ruining it. And this is not, and, 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 and I say this, but it'll always be in the back of our minds, this era. And that's why I, I firmly believe that video and, and, and the way we communicate right now is going to be a little bit more preferred than meeting in person. And that's just my, you know, it, it's very difficult to take away the, the fear that this virus has struck. And, and I say this, but it even happens in my own house. We're one cough away from me feeling uncomfortable. And that's, you know. I mean, I, 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 there is going to be it's like that, <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> this is, is, has torn down a lot of the, the, the walls that we've, you know, kind of unintentionally over years built up to separate the personal and the business aspect, right? Even at the office, the water cooler, right? You still had your personal separated and you only shared what you wanted at the water cooler, right? What I like about this I mean, Derek, basically I'm invited to your home, right? I see how you, how your office is set up, right? And can ask you, oh, hey, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, and, and, or, you know, Darren, what kind of books you have? So you've invited, we've invited each other into our homes, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing, at least for me, that I'm going to take out of this is that personal aspect and not separating the, 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 my business and personal as much as, I mean, it's, it's, I'm one, right? And, and that's, that's what I'm taking out of this. That's a good point. That's a really good point. That, that we're much more about the individuals, about who who we are as as people, rather than than a than a face that we're associated with a business. And I think that's uh, yeah. That's a really valid point. How many how many meetings have you been in where 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 the kids have been running around in the background and and or yeah. the dogs barking or the babies crying or whatever? And it's like, look, you know we're all human. We're all we've all got all this stuff going on around us, you know, and people are just a bit more you know nice to each other really because they because they appreciate that everyone is is has the same the same stuff so and i can yeah, tell you for, I mean, for the longest time i felt self-conscious about that like when you know if i hear kids in the background like i'm apologizing for that for that personal aspect <laughs> now i'm like you know when my kid walks in i'm like hey come say hi on camera or something you know uh, i mean i just i i i like that i think that's one of the good that is coming out of all this, right? The human factor is back. No, you guys did that. I, I would throw shoes at my kids. Get out of here. <laughs> well, no, I would. If you didn't see me, I'm like this. Get out. And I was like, you know, I mean, now I feel bad that's about what, it. You know, yelling, you right? Turn, you turn your camera off and you shout, you know. So. My dog starts <laughs> snoring. I'm kicking my dog underneath the kit. Stop snoring, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, it's... Uh, Interesting, interesting times, I guess, and uh, you know, but but I think that's the point is, nothing stays the same, right? So so that's like getting back to to where we, where we came from with this. Nothing anybody stays the same. Anybody who's watching this video, we want you guys to comment and and tell us things we didn't miss. Uh, we missed. I'm sorry. Oh, we no. missed. We've missed loads, right? Yes, loads. You know, it's, it's, there's and and especially uh, about images. <laughs> It's all perspective. It's all perspective. Yeah, you know? and I think it'd be really, really interesting to hear what, what people have got to say about where things are going. I mean, that's that's the thing, right? So so we've talked a lot about the, the, the beginnings. We've talked a lot about, about, you know, important things recently that have moved and changed. Um, where are things going? What What's what's happening? You know, I, I'm, I'm sorry we've got to do this, but, but um, going back to, to Vin Surf again and, and his guys looking at, um you know interplanetary networking right connecting to the the space station and mars and, and that sort of stuff the internet's not stopping it's not going to stop on 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 the planet because then we need that that ability to ship data to to wherever we are and of course as you know as we go so you know as we as we leave the surface of the planet so we've got to take data with us and get ship data back here so you know this this isn't going to stand still you know, we so need to, vent, to, to consider. Vent, if you're watching this, we're coming for you. We we're coming, coming for you, man. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cool. Listen, guys, we've we've gassed for forever, um, and as per usual. Um, I think we'll, um, unless anyone's got anything more, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there. I think uh, we're going to go uh, after Michael Dehan, too. Michael <laughs> Dehan. All right. Okay. Well, we, we, hey, we've got a hit list now, right? So, so let's see what we can do. And, and again, you know, anyone who's watching, if you've 
watched this far, you'll you'll appreciate that um, we we love this stuff. This is what this is what we live and breathe, and and you know we we enjoy bringing this stuff to you. If you've got any thoughts, any ideas about about people you might want to you know to be given the init six treatment, let us know. Um, let's let's catch up on Twitter, you know, email us, whatever you need to do. All the contact details are are here somewhere, wherever wherever we are on the YouTube screen. Um, you know, you know, like the video, right? Subscribe to the channel, give us the feedback, because these guys want something to talk about, and uh, and we love this stuff. This stuff is is awesome. So um, so thank you very much, guys. Thank you, as always. Um, good chat. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.